Hello and welcome to the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, Biotone Edu Partner Program, and massage industry experts. With the growing interest and popularity of the EduTalk series, Biotone continues to support virtual learning and building massage community by connecting you with industry experts who share their knowledge and expertise on topics not only for class discussion, but career success. Today's expert is Elisa DeFalco, President and Director of Education with MLD Institute International, located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. After studying behavior science, occupational therapy, and massage therapy, Elisa became a certified manual lymph drainage specialist for the pioneer of lymphedema treatment, Surgeon Roger, Robert Lerner. Her educational outreach includes peer-reviewed research, industry articles, CE provider, lecturer, and consultant. Let's listen and learn as Elisa discusses lymphatic detailing pre and post-op. She'll cover in-depth information and protocols for manual lymphatic drainage, or MLD, for plastic surgery as seen through the eyes of a plastic surgeon. She'll explain why pre-surgery MLD treatments are just as important as post-surgery treatments, and will cover the importance of staying current with education. Elisa will share the basics of what to do and what not to do. So there's a lot to cover. Elisa, thank you for joining us for this edu talk. I know you have a lot to get to, so I am going to exit. I'll see you on the other side. Everyone, again, please feel free to chat questions during Elisa's presentation, which she'll answer at the end. And with that, I turn it over to you. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful time here with the EduTalk series. And we're going to get right into it, guys. We have so much, and I'm so glad that you came out to learn about something that is really growing in our industry. In matter of fact, you're probably here because either you've had a client that's come in with surgery needs, or maybe you're looking to get into this field because as you grow with it and as you age with it, um, we're finding that we're having a need for taking care of people as they age. It's not just for plastic surgery, guys. This is for things like um, Mohs procedures for cancer removal. So you're going to learn a lot tonight. Um, I just want to show you this picture in the front. And this is with Dr. Rademacher and myself. And we're in surgery together. And he whispers to me and he says, come here. He don't usually do that, but I want you to hear this. I said, Dr. Rademacher, what do you need? Why am I coming so close? And he shows me a vessel in the breast of this patient, someone who came from South America, just had breast implants put in, went flying through the air came down and had pain in her armpit, which you probably already know what's in your armpit. If you don't, that would be lymph nodes. So they checked her lymph nodes and they were infected because her breast implant had broken. And that meant what was leaking from the implant was going into her lymphatic system, which we're going to go over real quickly because I want to get into some of your questions. I get questions every single day, emails and phone calls. It's hard to keep up with them, but we're doing it. We have an entire team 
to help you. And a doctor that knows what he's doing, he's been all around the world. And this is why I want to share this with you. When he went into her breast and took out the remaining part of this breast implant, what he found was that lymphatic vessel was engorged. Now, if you know about a lymph vessel, and some of you do, you shouldn't be able to see it. It should be nearly invisible. So if you can see it with your eyes, then it's too large. And it was too large because it had engulfed this area. This young lady, by the way, was saved by manual lymphatic drainage. See, that chemical that was in her body that she got when she was in South America, that was not the regular um, type of implant you would have in the United States. It had industrial strength silicone, the kind you use to do work in your home and it was leaking throughout her body. This became well known around the world and the women that had this implant died. This one that you see on the table, she did not die, she lived. We did lymphatic drainage that very same day and got all of that lymph out of her and she became a healthy person and was on Channel 4 News in Tampa. You can look her up. Her name is Johanna Rodriguez. We usually don't use their names, but you can in this case. She, she gives permission. She wants people to know about this condition. So with that said, if you've never been introduced to manual lymph drainage, this is gonna be a quickie um, review. Manual lymph drainage started with Dr. Emil Vauder. He was the author of Manual Lymph Drainage, which began nearly 100 years ago in Europe. And you're taking a headshot of their clinic and their college. How many of you would like to go to the College of Lymphology? Raise your hand. You're probably going, I'm raising my hand, but she can't see me. It's okay. If you feel that way, I got news. The College of Lymphology is here in the United States. There was a doctor who went to Europe, learned about lymph drainage and brought it here to the United States. And yes, I can't wait to answer your questions. His name was Dr. Robert Lerner and he opened the first clinics um, starting in New York, and it went down the East Coast, and he hired the most therapist in the United States. I was fortunate to be able to work for him. So if you want to see lots of pictures, we have a Facebook page, which is the MLD Institute. Um, we're also on Instagram with many followers. We're on Twitter with the research. So whatever your needs are, our group and our teachers are putting the information out. But if you need pictures, because some of you do, and you're trying to market yourself, you can go to our Facebook page and you'll find many pictures there. So we have this um, handout available to you. Um, if you would like to see what Dr. Lerner looked like, there you got a picture of him and you have our family tree. The roots are Dr. Vauder, who created the modality. The trunk of the tree is Dr. Robert Lerner. And you can put your name in those little white tablets up there and you can be a leaf in the tree, part of the family of lymphology. And like I said, if you would like to learn more about lymph, this is the place to do it. You can go to Europe and pay $3,000, or you can come here to the United States 
And you can join us online and I'm live there with many people across the country and it will save you under a thousand dollars, but you get the same information. Um, or if you'd like to be in class, um, we do have classes. We have our schedule ready all the way up till December of next year. And um, maybe you'd like to take a trip to Florida and go on our little uh, tiki hut on the floating tiki hut. Or you can go to New York where Dr. Lerner was from, where he first introduced lymphology to doctors. And that's where it got known in some of these very well-known universities. Minus the snow, right? Okay. Um, couple things I want to share with you because we are going to look at the most important thing, the pre and the post-op. But let's take a quick look here at our lymph nodes. I want you to look at your neck where there's cervical lymph nodes. This is a major drainage area for your face. You also have in your armpit, your axillary lymph nodes, which strain your arms and your shoulders and your breast area. This is when you're dealing with a lot of cancer, breast cancer. And then you have your inguinal lymph nodes, which strain your legs. And a lot of women have problems with this area, especially when they have C-sections. So hang on. We're going to get to that. But the total number that you have in your body is between 650 and 750. But this is the important part that you all need to know, guys. This is if you've been around and you're already doing MLD, what you need to know is what lymph is made from. So if you were to scrape yourself, which by the way, I did. I scraped myself. I apologize, have a little bruise there under my eye. But if you scrape yourself, this clear fluid comes out. What is that? That is lymph. And lymph is made of protein, fat, cellular debris, and water. And when there's no water, you have a real problem. These four things have to go through the vessels of your body. And it's like trying to flush a toilet if you don't have the water. It just sits there and it hardens and it solidifies. So lymph can only do two things. Please, everyone, if you leave today, learn this. Lymph can only do two things. It's either going to get hard because there's no water in it, or it's going to turn acidic. So what color should lymph be? It should be clear. And if it's not clear and it's more yellow, that is like a battery acid. It's eating through the skin. That's why you see it with lymphedema. You see it with lipedema. You see it with people that have bed sores. Why? Because they're not moving and they're not getting that water and it's eating through the skin. So when you see those two things and you're dealing with people that are going through different stages of surgery, you need to know that and have your eyes open and you need to get on that MLD. If they've been waiting for three or four months to get their MLD done, they probably have had that lymph turn hard already. And it's probably swollen in other places. So let's go there. So. We already know that we need more water intake, 
And here's what a lymph vessel looks like. This is not your vein. This is your lymph vessel. I know it looks funny and it looks more like a hair shaft. It has dark green to show the shafts and you see arrows. What are those for? That means that lymph can enter and it can exit. What does that remind you of? A transportation system. And that's what lymph is. When you study this in the lymphatic colleges, they will not call it lymphatic circulation. It, there is no lymphatic circulation. It is lymphatic transportation where lymph can get on and off it can exit, it can enter just like a main road or a highway. Lymph can get on and off. And if it doesn't get back on the road, it's sitting in the interstitial space. So guys, hear me. The number one procedure in the United States of America, believe it or not, is liposuction. Did everyone hear me? Liposuction. So what you're seeing around this vessel, those little circles are fat because that's what they're taking out. But they not only take out the fat, they take out the lymph vessels with the fat and guess what happens to the lymph? The lymph fluid is still being made and it's filling the spaces. So we need to take a look at that. And maybe when you have some time to take one of the courses, we can go over these maps of the lymph system that were given to us by Europe. But let me show you. The largest lymph vessel in your body, you should know, is your thoracic duct. It's a going up from up here all the way down to your belly button. It's straight up and straight down. And when you breathe, it encourages the lymph to move. It drains your legs. It drains the lymph in the body. So you don't want to puncture it and you don't want to take out those lymph nodes. The more lymph nodes you take out, the more lymph is going to sit in the interstitial space. And again, what does it become? Like a pond. A pond that's not moving becomes stagnant. And if it becomes stagnant, then it becomes thick and it becomes hard and you have problems like what you're going to see here. And what helps to keep lymph moving? Well, actually, muscle movement. It's not your heart that makes your lymph move. It's your body, your muscles make your lymph move from 10 to 12 beats. And with the lymphatic drainage, it moves at 10, 100 to 120 beats per minute. That's 10 times faster. That gets that lymph moving so that it gets out of your body. That's why it's so important to get to it before it turns thick and hard or acidic. Now, obviously, when somebody is injured or they've gone through surgery, are they going to feel good? Probably not. They're not going to be jumping up and down on a trampoline. I'm sorry. I know everyone's all in favor of trampolines and I like them too, but they're not going to do that right after surgery. So they're going to need some lymphatic drainage. And I thought I would give you a little list of some of the things that you might see MLD being used for in a doctor's med spa. So these here 
are some uh, procedures that are non-surgical. So we're talking about weight loss, gastro bypass, allergies, cystic breasts that are full of lymph, eczema, fibromyalgia. These are all autoimmune diseases, guys. We have a whole nother separate class of certification just on autoimmune diseases now because there's so many that they've come to know now are lymphatically based. Cellulite, lipedema, which is what you're looking at, you're going, is that fat that I see? Or is that lipedema? Well, that's lipedema. That's someone that's born with lymphatic vessels that are curled around. And that's in women from the waist down. So that is filled with fluid and they need lymphatic drainage. Neuropathy, that would be another one that you would be interested in. So one place I thought I would share with you, especially if you go into Florida, but you can be anywhere in the country, is I would go to your day spa shows like I, I do, because you're going to find people who are very interested in having lymphatic drainage done. That, that's a place right there where you can meet a lot of people that can share with you their own histories, and they want help with lymphatic drainage. So what does it look like? It's very gentle. I'm actually on top of the table there. You can be on top of the table if your, um, your state allows it. Not all states allow you to do that. Um, Florida, we can. So you can be on top of the table, you can be in a chair, you can be on a stool. There's many ways to do manual lymph drainage, but I thought I'd give you a little pricing. So depending on where you are, if you're doing MLD, a full body MLD session will run about 50 minutes. And they charge about $150 for the full body. I would not go below that. Doctors have told me they feel like the therapist is probably not certified if it's less than that. They know the prices. I work with the Board of Plastic Surgery. They tell me things all the time. So I'm sharing with you because I want you to be successful at what you're doing. Now, in other areas like Miami and New York and Beverly Hills, it can be up to $300 to $350 for a 50-minute treatment of the body. And I know we haven't talked about it, but just briefly, if you are doing the face, and that took an hour to do, 50 minutes, that would also be 150 um, in your area or 300 to 350 in your, if you're in a more fancy Miami, New York or Beverly Hills type area. So I gave you a little um, clip here. We have a whole YouTube um, for MLD Institute. If you want to hear from the surgeons, we have Dr. Rademacher there on the right that you saw earlier. We have Dr. Daniel Mann, who's a facial plastic surgeon, very well known in Boca Raton. You might want to see him. But this is important. If you're going to do pre-op MLD, the week before surgery, 
you're going to do three to five consecutive visits. And I mean, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We don't skip visits in between because that allows the speed of the lymph to lull. It goes down. If you do the lymphatic drainage daily, it keeps the speed up. That's how it's done in Europe. I know they do it different in here in, in the areas of the United States, but you want to do it the way they do it because you're going to get better results. Because you increase the speed of the lymph, you keep it from getting hard. And you're going to see in a minute exactly what I'm talking about. And the purpose of doing this is to clean out the vessels before they get messed up and they get cut up, okay? It's just like changing your oil. If you're gonna change your oil to go from Maine to California, you're not gonna wait till you're in the middle of the desert to change your oil. You do that before you leave. And then you make it to California if that's what you're doing. You're taking a long road trip. It's the same thing with lymph. You take care of it before they go into surgery, before they're cut on, before they have sutures. And post-op, this happens two to three days afterwards. I know a lot of you have heard different things, but this is coming from the Board of Plastic Surgery. They want three days to make sure the people are infection free, their pain meds are mad, managed, they have five consecutive visits, and this will decrease the edema, the pain, the bruising, and the scarring. If you do it that way, if you wait too long, let me show you. Here's a picture of doing MLD daily after surgery, post-op. Look at this picture. Is that different? Oh, it sure is. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And that was with um, a tummy tuck, fat transfer, um, breast implant. You see a lot going on there. And with MLD being done daily, she has a much better outcome. Here's also the difference with the breast um, implant. You see on the left, that is much flatter, the scar, than the one on the right. The one on the right has lymph that's up underneath and what happens is when they cut they suture the skin do they suture the lymph vessels no they can't the vessels are too small there's no way that they can do that so it leaves room for the lymph to sit in under there and if you don't do mld right after you get this thickened lymph. So you don't want to have that problem. So big difference between these two. Also, one question I get a lot of people asking me is why do people do MLD over the garment? The garment in this case, is not a lymphedema garment. This garment is to keep pressure on that area. That's a C-section in there, by the way. And then the tummy tuck over the C-section that this woman had. And liposuction was done as well. If you take that person out of the garment, those sutures can actually burst. 
And now you've got a problem. You've got lymph that's sitting all along that area and it's getting harder every day. You got scar tissue and you got seromas. So this is not um, a modality that you can take lightly. It really comes with experience and training. And working with doctors really does help. Um, I'm very grateful. I, my whole career, 23 years, I've had all doctors help me with my patients. And the first one, when I was working with the one that you saw there, he hollered at me. He said, why did you take the garment off? I said, well, I, I was trying to get my hands on to do the MLD. And he says, no, the garment must remain on and you must do the MLD over that garment. And that garment's going to change over the course of a couple of weeks, depending on what they do. So please get authorization by your doctor to know if you can and if you're allowed to do MLD for this patient or you may have to work right over the garment. I have a couple of good tricks too, by the way, that have helped me. And here's a picture of what I was telling you. When they go in and they suck out the fat and it leaves, if you suck out the fat, you sucked out the vessels, okay? I got to tell everybody this. Um, this is another whole issue. If you suck out the fat, you suck out the lymph. And you're going to leave fluid like you see on the left. So you're going to have to do MLD like we did on the right. Thank God we got it in time. In four days, we got all the fluid out. What happens with people is that the fluid begins to move and you start to look and you go, why do they look so strange? Like their abdomen isn't quite right. It's moved here. It's moved there. It's because the lymph has also moved. So I hope that helps you. So this one, like I said, we were able to do it in four days. Um, she had it done in one month, the liposuction, and realized that she was filling with fluid. And that's something you don't want to have. If you don't get that fluid out of there, remember what I told you, it's going to become hard, and then you're going to need to do something else. And that's when we get into our master classes. How do you handle scar tissue um, for something like this? What if it's a C-section? Well, a lot of times with a C-section, they'll then go in and do another procedure right on top of it. So you got layer upon layer of scar tissue from... Maybe they had one C-section and then they had another. And now they had a tummy tuck on top of it. It's like layers of lasagna. Sorry, I didn't mean to make any of you laugh. I'm just saying you've got layers and you've got lymph that's in between those layers. So they're getting stuck that lymph. You also have another problem. So underneath those garments, they may not only do lymphatic drainage, that's for the lymph, that's what we're doing, but they may also have blood. And the blood is going through these vessels that you can see here. So on the left, you see the tummy tuck, you see the blood going through that vessel there. And at the end, you see the circular area where all the blood is being collected. 
the doctor might do that and it may be in there for a week or two weeks. I've seen it in breast cancer. I've seen it in C-sections. I've seen it for many things. And something you've got to keep your eye out for. Number one, it's not in our scope of practice to remove these items. This should be done by a doctor, if anything, a nurse. We have a lot of nurses that we treat or have um, trained. Um, we have a lot of doctors who've also been trained, Dr. Rademacher's trained, because he works with famous people. So that has to be removed. If you let it stay in too long, so please don't do this. Like some of my therapists have called me from New Jersey. The doctors were telling them from Miami, take this item and pull it out. And thankfully, one of my therapists said, Lisa, I'm not going to do this. And I said, don't do that. I said, you don't know how long it's been in there. He's telling you by Zoom how to do this, which is out of your scope of practice, especially for New Jersey. I wouldn't do it. Well, it was a good thing. The woman went home. The doctor told her to pull it out. She couldn't pull it out. She wound up in the hospital and they had to surgically remove the scar tissue that was wrapped around it. So these are some of the things that can happen. So this is not lymph we're talking about now. We're talking about blood. These are two fluids that are brother and sister, and they affect each other in the area of surgery. So you need to know what each one is doing and what the garments are for or when it's to be taken out and who's to be taking it out. and this will help you when you're working with them. And matter of fact, this was in my class. What you're looking at is a tummy tuck. I saw my student, she could not stand up straight. We were practicing. I said, something is going on with you. And she whispered, she said, I had a tummy tuck. I said, when did you have this? She said, I had it 12 weeks ago. I said, if it's 12 weeks ago, that means you can't lay flat, supine, or prone. And she said, I can't. And I said, your doctor's telling you what? Well, she said, I had no drainage of, of any kind, not blood, nothing, no MLD. So we took her to the doctor that I knew, got a second opinion. And what you see on the right that looks like bacon, guys, that's not bacon. That's blood that solidified. And it almost wrapped around and she had a problem with bowel movements. You don't want that. That's a very, very common thing, by the way and you don't want it. But that's what can, scar formation can happen when you don't have lymphatic drainage and you don't have blood or any type of way to remove these two items in your body that can turn into scar tissue. And if it does, I'm going to skip this for a moment. If it happens, what can you do is the next question. That's what a lot of you are asking me. There is a tool that a lot of people are using that is welcomed by many states for massage therapists. And it's the MPS Dolphin. And it's 
that's used for scar tissue. And is, there's an AC current and a DC current, and I'll make it real simple. Um, a DC current is different than an AC current in that AC currents, um, when they run through your body, it's the same one that they use in the electric chair. So I don't think any one of us want the electric chair version, but the DC current is more gentle and it can run through the scar tissue and break it up gently and allow the lymph to flow. It's kind of like having that um, flow of the pond and you're breaking up any um, logs that might be in the way and allowing the lymph to flow. So there's that tool. Um, we also have um, pressure pads that we use that are from Germany. These are not ones that are artificially made into the garment. These are ones that are made for lymph to break down hardened tissue. It's something that we used when I was doing lymphedema work many years ago. And it would break it down so that the lymph that was left behind, that was solidified and hard, could move. So there are tools that can be used, but you have to know where they are. You have to be trained in it and be able to purchase it and know where to get it. So I know that we covered a lot of material and I wanna make sure that I leave time here for you guys so that you can have your questions answered. But before we do, I just want you to have a book, a reference book, because I'm not coming off the cuff here. This book is written by Dr. Renato Casseroller. This is from the College of Lymphology in Europe. It's the compendium of Dr. Vauder's manual lymph drainage. And if you want to get it online, you can do that. And it will tell you, you can go by each diagnosis. It will tell you what you need to do, how many days, what other things and tools you might need to get the results that you're looking for. So this is some good information, guys. There's so much now. Let me tell you, in the past five years, there's been a doctor who's discovered lymph in the brain. This doctor is Dr. Jonathan Kipnis from the University of Virginia. And what they found on the brain in Alzheimer's, guess what? What we call plaque in the brain of Alzheimer's, it's composed of protein, long chain fatty acid, water, and fat. Does it sound familiar to you? Yeah. It's lymph. And from that, and with the newest and most high tech equipment, he's finding out that we can use this modality to help multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, concussions for football and major um, athletes. There's so much more. That's why we had to add information to our classes. We This is not the same old class. If you took our class 15 years ago, you're way behind because there is so much information and so much research that we had to do a brand new website so that we can have that information. We're MLD Institute International now, and you'll be seeing some new information there. We also have MLD Institute um, International Certification by Evergreen. 
we're the only one in the country that has that. That gives you your name on the international list of therapists. We have MLD international books that we're putting together. We have master classes. And we're also on PESI, P-E-S-I. And you can look for us if you're looking for certification in lymphatic detailing, which is what I was just talking about. That's dealing with the hard stuff. If you're new to this, you need to get start with the beginners with the certification. And we have that and we have special Let me put it there. We have a four day international certification and we do it on the weekends. So we do one weekend and then another weekend to get you certified. And for those who want master classes, we do two hour master classes and we'll be starting them in January. And it will be in the evenings for two hours, very similar to the format that we have here. And we'll bring on Dr. Rademacher and some of our other doctors. So I hope this has brought a lot of light to this topic for you. I see some probably questions up in the chat. Hi, I haven't seen any questions come in, Elisa, but thank you so much. Your uh, talk was very informative and, and just scratching the surface. There's so much to learn. Um, let's see, please send the page website. Sorry, Alex is asking that. So I'm not sure which website she's referring to. Um, everyone, tomorrow you'll receive a follow-up email and it will have a copy of today's recording. It will have a handout um, from Elisa and it will also have contact information so that you can reach out to her directly and learn more about MLD and MLD Institute International. So let's go back to some chats. Um, what do you mean by master classes? So master classes, we never used to have them. And I came up with Dr. Rademacher um, to do lymphatic detailing was the first one. So we go into greater detail when we're talking about um, doing like what a lot of people are asking about. Um, if you want to do surgery, what about um, Brazilian butt lift. How do you handle that? Because it's not what people think it is. Um, in fact, it's one of those that you can see that um, there can be a lot of necrosis if they didn't get it done correctly. So that would be something you want to know. So we go over each one of the procedures that are done with Dr. Rademacher so that people get the right information because they're getting information online from other therapists. But therapists, I love you guys, but guess what? We're not doctors. And if we're gonna work with doctors, we need doctors who tell us information. So we got master classes in that and we have master classes for autoimmune conditions as well. And they can find out more about those classes by contacting you. Yes. Okay. Um, Susan is asking, can swollen lymph nodes be returned to normal size following MLD, say post-COVID? Yes, they can. But a lot of times when they've been stretched out from a sickness, when you have another sickness later, They'll tend to swell up sooner again, but don't freak out about it. Just do your MLD and if it reduces, you're good. If it doesn't, 
then get to the doctor and see if something else is underlying. Okay. Um, Elisa, would you um, click to exit your um, screen share, please? So that, all right, that's great. Okay. All righty, I wanted to finish up with the chats and where did they go? Okay, that's crazy. Um, how often should clients get massaged after lipo? They should have their MLV done on a daily basis, about three days post-op. So it would be um, five days prior to the operation, and then at least three days after a 48 hour waiting period, it sounded like, then three days of massage to help move the fluids. Is that yes. correct? Yes. And if they've had a lot of lipo, you may want to do it even more. They may have five days. Dr. B say, we'll, we'll do it a few more days. And and um, by looking at one of the photographs with the the breast and all the the bruising she had, you could see in three days, uh, so much had changed. So oh, yes, yes. Um, okay, is there a difference between the online course and the ones you mentioned? Um, the actually they're very similar. Um, the ones that we do online are on Zoom. So you get that interaction with the instructor. Um, we do have classes that we do in the classroom, but the cost is substantially more because of all the stuff since COVID. I'm sorry for that, guys. It's, you know, don't shoot the messenger on this one, but the hotels really raise the prices on us. So we have something in everybody's price budget. Um, that's good to know. Um, Lily is asking um, and saying, thank you. This was very informative. As an RMT in Ontario, I have seen an increase in MLD, need and not enough therapists, not enough therapists in general. What I learned in school obviously scrapes the surface and I may delve deeper into this field. So, and, and we hear that a lot, not a lot of therapists. And it sounds like a great opportunity to specialize your practice. You know what? I was just here in Ontario. I'm on the other side of the bridge in Michigan right now. And I hear that from a lot of Ontario therapists. I do have an instructor that goes to Ontario. So if you're interested, that would be Lainey Miller. And she also does the MPS for the scar tissue. So a lot going on in Ontario. All right. Well, that's it's good for everyone that way. Um, it looks like we've come to the end of our chat questions. If there, oh, when will Lisa be teaching in Orlando, Florida? Well, she's based in Fort Lauderdale. So I'll let you answer that, Elisa. I will be there very shortly. Um, we're making plans to come to an Orlando and Se habla Espanol. Um, we're the only one with the program that is in Spanish at a college in Miami for doctors. So if you need Spanish too, we will be there in Spanish and English. All right. And um, Lily was asking for Lainey's um, contact information. So um, maybe you could email that to me and we can yes. share that. And then Susan is wrapping it up with, I think everyone should take an MLD course this year. And again, thank you. And um, again, please watch your inbox tomorrow for the follow-up e um, the follow-up 
email with the recording link, Elisa's contact information. And um, that's a great way for you to start the dialogue and learn more from her directly. And um, and possibly, you know, we'll see you teaching next year or, to, or increasing your practice um, by reaching new clients with this skill. Very informative and interesting. Elisa, thank you so much. And what I'd like to mention before we wrap up is there are two EduTalks left for the remainder of 2023, which is incredible. The year has flown and so many great presentations that you can see on biotone.com under the EduTalk tab in the archive library. Now, upcoming on December 5th is Dale Alexander, and he will be presenting Freeing the Heart by Releasing the Body's Central Linkage. And Dale will have a second edu talk in 2024 in March. So that's something to keep look out for. On December 12th, Elizabeth Clark will present on Therapeutic Heath Benefits for clients with arthritis. And as we head into the winter months, heat, heat therapy sounds wonderful. So please join us, watch your inbox. Um, RSVP is open for the December 5th, Dale Alexander presentation. They will open tomorrow on biotone.com or there will be a link in the email that you'll receive and follow up. Thank you everyone so much. Um, best wishes to you for a safe and delicious holiday week and join us again. Annalisa, anything quickly in closing? Yes, I just like to thank everybody who took the time to listen to all this information and please share the love with everyone that you can and any questions that you didn't get answered, feel free to call us, email us. We got a group ready for you. Well, thank you so much. And again, everyone, take care. Join us again on December 5th. And for those of you who are not um, aware, we also do EduTalk Diabetes Series. And that will kick off again on January 16th, 2024. And um, watch your inbox, inbox again for invitations to those upcoming talks. Thank you. Be safe. Be well. And enjoy the holiday season. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.